In this video, we're going to do a quick review on the General Pneumatics High Speed Metal Saw. This is a uh, pneumatic hacksaw, basically, from Harbor Freight. This a little Harbor Freight thing cost me like 17 bucks, I think it was, about $20. I'm doing some work on some exhaust today, and I have to get in some very tough spaces and do some cutting. So we're going to give it a shot and see how well it works on exhaust. These blades are a little flimsy. I'm concerned. Like I almost want to take a hammer to them things. For crying out loud. Maybe that's just how they put kerf into it. You think? Is that uh, Chinese kerf? I don't know. At any rate, we're going to give this thing a shot. I hope it can cut two inch pipe. It looks like I'm right on the edge of not being able to do that. I don't know how far the range is on the reciprocation, but we're going to check that out. See if this thing's worth it. It's only 20 bucks. How can you go wrong? Okay, so this thing has two set screws, one on each side, which is probably a good idea. You know, I'm going to give him some credit for that. The first time I tried to put this blade on, I didn't have this latch open. And I stuck the blade in there and thought I had it tight, and I turned it on. The blade shot about 20 feet across the room. So be on the lookout for that when you first fire it up. Make sure the blade's tight. I didn't know it had two set screws. Usually a Sawzall just has one. So be on the lookout for that. And we're going to do a little test here real quick to see how it cuts a piece of pipe I've already removed. Okay, guys. So basically what I'm seeing, because this thing has such a small stroke, any looseness or um, vibration that's allowed in whatever you're cutting is going to dissipate all the energy of the cut. So if you're cutting an exhaust and it's spring-loaded and suspended, all the energy of that cut is going to be absorbed in those springs. So you're going to have to prop up whatever it is you're cutting and make it stiff to get this thing to perform. Even then, it's not amazing or nothing. I'm just telling you, you're losing a huge amount. Did you see how my hand was vibrating? That stroke is so small that that little minute of vibration I'm allowing is the same as the stroke. So the blade is theoretically has no velocity in relation to the surface. Apparent velocity is what I was trying to say. <laughs> Okay, I am not going to torture you through that cut. You get the idea. This thing ain't all that amazing. They have a finer blade. I think it's 32. Yeah, 32 teeth versus the 24 teeth. So that may have been a better move. I'm not sure for tubing. It, it's um, one thing I do want to do with this though is to remove the old exhaust system. I want to cut off this little knobby and uh, I'm going to see how it cuts rod real quick. Let's do a small piece of rod, see how it does that. We'll climb under there and set up for, well you won't be able to see that happen so let me, uh, this looks fairly similar to me, do a quick little cut on that bad boy. I don't know how this is going to go. These are the specifications of the air compressor that I'm using. That's uh, 4.5 cubic foot per minute at 90 PSI, which I'm thinking this tool was rated for four cubic foot per minute. Okay, so I'm within the rated specifications. 
So I'm not gonna cut through this whole thing. I mean, we've got better things to do in life than sit here and watch some guy cut a piece of rebar. So if you're thinking of picking this thing up, I hope I gave you a good idea of what it can do. And remember, whatever you're cutting has to be extremely rigid because of the very low stroke of this reciprocation. It's like a damn bone saw. You know how a bone saw won't cut your skin? It's because the it's moving in such a small amount at a time that your skin moves with the blade. It's, it's just such a small movement. But something hard doesn't have that flexibility. So it'll cut right through cast, but it won't cut your arm. We're, we're kind of getting that effect here. If this thing was just flopping around on the suspended exhaust, I don't know that this tool is going to pull off the job I bought it for, but uh, it's going to have to. All right, all right. It ain't over yet. This little thing has redeemed itself. With a good compressor, <clears throat> this might have cut off a little quicker, but basically this is one of those, uh, I cut this knobby off of here to uh, help remove the muffler because getting this thing through, back through that rubber is a pain in the neck. That rubber's kind of old and hard and it just wouldn't move, so I just cut that knobby off and this thing pulled right off. I'm going to pray that it matches up now. And I've got huge mess. And it uh, looks fairly similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's hope, let's hope. I'm on the fence about whether or not I want to go ahead and hook up this one clamp with it. Being down, it might make it harder getting it up in there. Yeah, what the hell, I'm going to throw it on now so I don't got to mess with it once it's up inside the unit.